Welcome to Men on Women, the show for women who really, really want to understand men, want to hear the truth from men, and want to hear it told like it's never been told before. Tonight, we're starting off with some questions about attraction in the workplace. Have you ever witnessed this? Yes, I have. You've seen people go through this? Oh, yes. Have you seen it end badly? Yes. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> no, it's comical, though. It's comical? For me. For the others. The others to, laughing to and watch pointing? them, yeah. Oh, man. It's got to be painful, though. Tonight's real guys are Jason Cullen, who is single and dating, and Rob Firing, who is also single and dating. But in his case, there's just one girl in particular. <laughs> well, yeah, really. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank so, uh, so have you ever have you ever had an attraction to somebody you've worked with? Oh, you got to be attracted to the people you work with. I mean, I I work in a restaurant where everybody's got to be attracted to make money anyway. So, I mean, you're walking around and you're working with. Beautiful women. Lookers. Oh, yeah. And I mean, they've got great personalities because otherwise, again, you don't make any money. And you, you can't help but be attracted. Yeah. So it, it works out all right. Do you ever be attracted to more than one at once? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, the whole thing, really? Oh, like the, the whole staff. The staff. Yeah, just, yeah. Okay. You can think a lot. <laughs> you, you can think? As long as you commit yourself to one, then it's okay. So you have the thoughts. Oh, everyone has the thoughts. You have the, the thoughts. thoughts are, the thoughts are what kill you. <laughs> they don't kill you, really. No, well, no, as long as you keep them to yourself. <laughs> Just don't get burned. That's right. Okay. Don't get caught. Yeah, okay, I'm learning some valuable tips here for this uh, workplace thing. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm going to uh, bring out somebody else who's, who knows a lot about this, worked in the business a long time, the show business, I'm talking, from Traders, airing Thursday nights on Global. Please welcome the Baron of Bay Street, Bruce Gray. <laughs> It's, a, it's not bad, is it? I know. You can rent it from me, and you know, when you need I a weekend like off. I would like to. Maybe for a party. What do you think? For a party. Well, a speaking party. of parties, that's what I want to know. Do you, you know, people get together all the time on sets, right? Yeah. Does it, do you think it happens when they're in the middle of a scene, or does it happen more after work at a party or a rap party? Have you seen rap party get oh, together? The rap Parties are, are a whole actually well actually you know they're a whole different kettle of fish they're like a bacchanal in an old Roman orgy way everybody can do anything that they want with anybody for that one night and then you can never talk about it again <laughs> so it's this kind of show business rule nothing is permanent from that night nothing gets mentioned again from that night the fact that you touch somebody. In that special in place. In that special place. <laughs> could never be mentioned again or brought up or even indicated that it happened. You have so to forget about it. So what do you do when you pass that person on the set of your next project? It's the rule. There are certain rules. You know, you only go so many miles an hour on the freeway, and that's another rule. That's just one of those rules. It's just rules. one of the rules. OK. But, uh, you know, when you're, of course, when you're at work, you, of course, form attachments with people. And if you have love scenes, you know that part of you wants to invite your attraction to that other person. So you become available to what about them is a turn on. For that scene. And for that scene, but you're starting to look at mm. that person. Do you want to see that? Very <laughs> nice. I must hell? say the hug was great. The hug was good. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm going like that on the hug. That's, that's going to be something I want to repeat. OK, so we're going to have our rap party right, right after this. Yeah. <laughs> no one can talk about it. That's right. No one goes okay. on tour. I mean that. <laughs> we have uh, someone in our audience who has a question for you guys. Would you like to go ahead? Well, sure. Um, it's often pretty difficult to uh, keep uh, an attraction in the work workplace uh, secret, particularly from your coworkers, uh, assuming you want to. Um, any suggestions from the panel about uh, how you might do that? It's just unrealistic to expect, I mean, all of us work somehow for a living, or most of us. It's just crazy to expect that you put that many people together in a building or in a workplace that, uh, that something isn't going to happen. I mean, chemistry is inevitable. And uh, I think that, mm -hmm. that a workplace that can't adapt, or I mean, you have to do some adapting as well. You can't flaunt it or do any of the obvious things. But as long as you stick to your intuitions and, and play it reasonably, then uh, I don't think anybody should mind. And you, you have to be sensitive. I'm sorry, but you have to be sensitive to the rest of the people you work with. Mm -hmm. If you're having a relationship with somebody, I think it's just prudent to uh, to keep it uh, outside the, the workplace because it starts to mess up all the other relationships, you know, that are sort of set in place in the workplace. Have you had affairs with people at work? You've actually gone. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Had oh a baby. Oh, it was. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> no, I, I, had, I had a relationship once with a girl that I worked with, and, um, yeah, it worked out all right. It was great. The only difficult part was uh, when it split off. It became a little bit difficult working in a confined <sighs> space. I mean, things were thrown, and... and it's, it's dangerous for, for a time. Wrong? Well, nothing, nothing dangerous. I mean, it was like a piece of bread, but I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not going to hurt you, but it, it's still, the, the emotional pain is there. Yeah, but, uh, through the bread hurling. Yeah, I'm telling you. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's not so bad. The only problem is, is that um, relationships, unless you're with the person with whom you're going to be with for the rest of your life, um, you're going to find that your relationship only has a certain time span. And if you work with someone and you date someone, you are going to use up the time that your relationship has faster. <laughs> Because she's spending so much exactly, time with them. Exactly. There's, 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 there's a time limit for everything. There's a, t a time at which you are no longer going to have anything to talk to with, uh, with that person. You're going to have nothing left. Um, I mean, you're going to use up all your charms. You're going to use up all your jokes, all the things to do. And it, How it's old are become, you now? I'm 22. Man. <laughs> you used up all your jokes. No. <laughs> so, so the woman who hurled the bread, that was that you'd used up your charm with her? No, and... she had used up her charm, and that's why oh. it was over. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I see how this is going to work. Okay. What would happen if you guys were up for a promotion and your boss hit on you? What, how would you respond? If she was cute. <laughs> yeah, my, my boss is if a big Greek. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> that's kinda, that's actually kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, well, kind of work with me on this. Slightly <laughs> 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 like smaller female Greek. Uh, well. No, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, I don't think I'd take it any differently. I, work, work and social life has to be uh, separated to the point where when you're at work, you're working. And that work relationship is different from the social relationship that you have outside of work. I mean, sure, it may be with the same people, but it's got to be a different relationship. Because if it's not, then it's simply going to complicate things at work, make things difficult, and eventually somebody's going to snap and... Throw bread. <laughs> yeah, throw bread, exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, the pain of a thrown <laughs> crust. Okay, so what about you? I, I think you can... I would... I would be there right away, I think. It would just be too easy. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, and I think that... <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, boy, just a gigolo. I your boss is listening, eh? Here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're dead. You're yeah, dead. Uh, I can't get away now. This isn't live, is it? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's a different world now. I don't, I think it was, it was taboo to do something like that 50 years ago or even 10 years ago. But, um, I mean, we've lived through the 80s, thank goodness. Yeah, but now it's not, and now it's not a question of taboo, it's a question of sexual harassment. Well, you know, uh, right? I mean, not that's... in our case. I, I mean, I'm not going to go and, you know, sue her if she fires me. Well, you never know. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the big deal right now is, I mean, is, is where the line is drawn. I mean, right. and of course it's difficult for, I mean, guys to file sexual harassment suits. I mean, I, I that's kind of that, embarrassing. I think that but... if I was someone's boss, I would have to be there is a bit of a double standard and it's just natural it exists and i think a guy would have to be more responsible and, and pay greater attention to that than uh, than a woman would have to yeah. do you really think so i think so yeah the thing is that um i mean if you're attracted to somebody god you don't want to deny what's going on between you and that person this could because be the of best thing. some hierarchy you know you don't know where it's going to end up okay well we have a caller on hold with another question for the guys about dressing or undressing, as the case may be, in the office, but we'll let her clarify right after this. Jason Cullen and Rob Firing and of course traders Bruce Gray. We have a caller online with uh, with a question for you guys, and so I, I'm assuming you're ready for this. Yep. Okay, Cheryl, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Good. L let's let's hear from you, girl. Well, my question is: Do men like it when women dress sexy in the office, or do they find it too distracting? <laughs> it's distracting, and you like it. <laughs> about that. And it depends on the woman. Quite. Well, I have nothing more to say We're not supposed to say that until we, the, sec, the third segment, I'm sure, but <laughs> at some level it's true. Do you know what I mean? There's some people turn up at the office in the most outrageous get-up that's meant to be provocative or something like that, and you think to yourself, I wish you'd just worn a nice skirt and blouse or something. Do you know what I mean? Well, something conservative. Well, something that we, we're, we're here to work, you know, and if there's something that when you bend over, things fall out of place, <laughs> I can't concentrate on what the hell we're there to do. 
You know what I'm saying? At so, that point, does it really matter? <laughs> and the business can go out the window, and who cares? Okay, well, uh, what so, about you, Rob? What? Well, I, I, I know what you're talking about. I mean, as, as, a, you know, as much of a, a guy as I am, um, you know, when, when the week starts, I, I really do want to think about what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's not so much of a distraction as um, I think it's partly even insulting in a way to the, to the women that don't do that, who actually have a, a sense of what's appropriate and, and what's not. And uh, um, I think that the women who are doing that are doing it because they think they need to, and they don't. You know, mm -hmm. the truth is that, um, you know, uh, an attractive woman is attractive regardless of what they do or, or don't wear. Okay. Good point. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, good. Cheryl. That was a great question, and thanks for being part of Men on Women. What I usually will do is I will let my partner know that I'm, I'm in a funk and that I won't try to take out how I'm feeling on her and tell her, look, I'm feeling the way I'm feeling right now. Let's talk about stuff a little bit later when I can calm down. So I just really want to distance myself and acknowledge I'm not feeling good right now. And it's not her fault. Uh, it's been a really, really tough day. Wow. The first thing I want to do when I come in the door is, is um, have somebody that's going to meet me um, inside the place to help me forget about the outside of the place. What's the problem? What's wrong? Are you sure? Nothing bothers me more than that. If I tell you I need my space, then I need my space, which means I want to go have a beer, basically. Chill out, have a cigarette, relax. Don't talk to me for at least 10 minutes at least. So what would your advice be to women who have a grumpy man to handle? Or maybe, like, what about you? How do you like to be dealt with when you get back from a bad day? Well, I, I think it, just to set this stage a little bit, um, it might not necessarily be grumpiness, per se, that, 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 that is the problem. I think that men and women communicate differently. And that's it's not bad. It, it's the way it is. And it, it, they shouldn't be the same, because they're just naturally different. And I think that uh, women like to communicate a lot and solve their problems by talking about it, and men solve their problems by not talking about it. I mean, for me, I don't know about you two, but for me, talking about something that just happened like that, with exceptions, I guess, is like replaying the whole thing over again. And I can't stand it. I'd like to. Like, you've already done it. Once. Let the dust yeah. settle. You just want to let it die. Hours for a second. The boy, other thing oh is sometimes the thing that set you off, the 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 germ of the matter is so refined, so particular to the situation, that only somebody who, who knows about that situation will really get it. And whereas you, you explain it to somebody who has a, you know, a vague understanding of the situation, you're having to do too much backtracking. Well, yeah, but what you're not understanding is this. What you're, and by that time, now you're exasperated. Yeah. And, and, and you don't feel good at having shared the day. You're yeah. now and now you're having to go through it again, as opposed to what happened was this particular thing which really gets me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I'd have to agree. I have to agree with that, Rob, about the um, the way that the men and women communicate differently. I mean, women are really big on the on uh, the empathy idea. They want to talk about it and uh, have their friends empathize with them and, and mm -hmm. tell them that oh, it's going to be all right. Well, what happened? And they did this, and oh my goodness, and that that works really well. I found uh, for. Well, women as opposed to guys. So guys you say just a lot wanna... of, oh my goodness, when your girlfriend's telling <laughs> It's exactly it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you sit there and say, oh, yeah? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, he, he didn't. You're, no. That's awful. Yeah, and you, and you really got to really get a stone face going. Hey, like, you, it's, it's really important. But... Yeah. You're a jerk. <laughs> that's me. But, uh, yeah, guys just want to forget about it. Like, if I have a really bad day at work, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to have a beer, and it's going to I'm going to be done. I'm going to start up, I'm going to start up fresh, and I'm going to completely forget what happened. Because there's, a, I mean, what are you going to dwell on it for? I mean, denial it, rules. Yeah, yeah, denial is awesome. And you know, it's funny, Bruce, what you were saying. Sometimes there is a particular person that you, you find that you want to talk to about something that sets you off. Yeah. And I've even got in trouble for not bringing the problem back to the girlfriend. Oh, you can talk about it with so-and-so, yeah, but right. you can't talk about it with me. Yeah, What's wrong right. with me? And, um, I mean, Okay, wait, wait, wait. I got one for you, then. How about this? 12% of people in the workplace admit that they have actually seen people at work making whoopee. Has that ever happened to any of you? Making whoopee. Like, making whoop, whoopee. Capital w, whoopee. Yeah, the big, the big W. <laughs> Couple exclamation points, Well, yeah. I wish I'd been one of that 12. <laughs> 
I'm not sure you do. I mean, what, what would you do? I'd look. <laughs> Peeping Tom over here, wow. I have no problems with that. <laughs> My ethical theories notwithstanding. <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, no, so come if someone on. wants to You're do it in place. You're not going to just hang out watching oh, body bingo on the boardroom table. Oh, come on, it'd be hilarious. I'd go, you guys. Yes. Hey, look who's, hey, look you get what friends. they're doing. Oh, my God. So, uh, so it's never, been Rob, you've been really that. quiet. Has this happened to you? Well, no, I've, uh, it's funny. I've never seen it, and I think I, I try to avoid it. It's, it. I think it comes from, um, my parents used to sleep above me on the floor above, and I used to hear it all the time, and it was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wow. No. So, uh, <laughs> Not that. So, uh, there we go again. Just so what you're telling me is that the girls at work remind you of your mom. Oh, no. <laughs> no, he's not telling me that. No. No. It's out tonight. Wow. Wow. That's right. I'm going to go God. Freud on you no, soon. No, no, I have heard it a couple times, but I mean, 12% is, that's actually that's, not bad. That's not bad, that's not bad at all. You would, eh? Yeah, but, uh, I've never actually seen it. Well, I, I know that I've seen what I was sure was that. But it was the tail end of it, or oh, just the start of it. As it were. Or they were smoking. <laughs> <laughs> they were smoking. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, okay, you know what? This is getting too hot for me. So we, we're going to take a break for a moment, and we'll be right back. <laughs> to Men on Women with Jason Cullen, Rob Firing, and Bruce Gray. We are, uh, I'm just going to review here, okay. You've, you've seen people, well, you haven't really seen, you've heard about people, you know, at work, and you've thought about it yourself. You've had some attractions. Oh, you've, uh, <laughs> you've had some... Wish there'd been more. Maybe <laughs> wish there'd been a few more. <laughs> what, what happens if you're attracted to somebody that you can't have? There's... Oh problem. man, does that increase you, you the attraction level? Yeah. <laughs> poetry. Yeah, showers. Yeah. Uh, there, the other thing is that it isn't just at work, but it's in life. You're going to, you're not going to get from here to there uh, without f falling for somebody who is either off limits or not interested. And dealing with that, and, and particularly in a workplace or even in a friendship, is a real study in discipline, self control, mm -hmm. and something you need to exercise because. If you like that person, and you obviously did, at some level, you respect them. And if you respect them, you want them to feel the same way about you. And if you are pressing on them in a way that's painful or uncomfortable for them, you're going to lose them not only, which you're never going to have them anyway, but you're also going to lose their friendship. So to create out of somebody who, who is a potential, in your heart, a lover, Mm. Turn that person into a friend is a real act of creation. But, you know that, but how? But how? How? how, did, how did, what's the alchemy? How do you change the feeling? How do you yeah, change the feeling? Do, the feeling doesn't change though. No, okay. the feeling I mean, never you changes. Just live it's it. after yeah. time, time, and it's, it is in yeah, the beginning. True. It is the hardest thing. It is, it's the hardest thing to do. But I mean, it's, it's still, it's really, still it's rewarding. Not telling that person that uh, I mean, it's, it's the same for everybody, men and women. I, I think. I mean, it's a thing that it's, it's what. You know, love songs are, are made of those hurting songs is it, when you can't tell the person and you know you're going to look like an idiot and half the time you end up spilling your guts anyway um, and they know by the way <laughs> no, of yeah, course it's like being hung over they know you know it's uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't follow that one wow. <laughs> um, and uh, but uh, you know it's, it is it is the worst so the worst every thing. time you see that person what thought process do you use what do you there you are, there she is, there's your heart. What do you do? I, I, I do the, the Homer Simpson thing, like don't, don't say anything dumb, don't say anything dumb. You know, and then <laughs> think on sexy thoughts, think on sexy thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's the other thing is that if you're, it, it, you can disappear them for the time you're at your most vulnerable. You can? Just, yeah, just don't engage, don't look over there, don't, you know, I mean, it's a discipline thing, okay. you, because it, you can't, yeah. you can't make it hell okay. for them. <laughs> No, I, I mean, know. there's somebody that you feel that feel feelings about. You don't want to make life awful for them. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that if you behave, there's always the possibility that if you do behave in a way, that that person who is off limits will suddenly get within the limits. Something might happen in their life. 
And if you behaved in a gentlemanly way, yeah. maybe right. they'll end up coming to you because you're not somebody who didn't hit on them. OK, I got a special test. We're going to do stump the guy. Okay. Stump, Fair enough. Stump the guy, the climactic conclusion the climactic, of every good. episode of Men on Women, where we ask questions that guys really have to ask their hearts for the, for the truth on this one. Okay, you ready for this? Oh, God. Wow. Okay. Wow. Addressing that black Do you have a box organ? of Kleenex for that? Yeah, that's right. I knew that, I knew that chest which, was there for a reason. Oh <laughs> which God. outfit would be your favorite at the staff Christmas party? Okay. We've got the vintage velvet, very sensual, very sensual. I'll pass it along. <laughs> we have the, the backless <laughs> number. <laughs> okay, it's not plunging, but the back shows, you know, and that's I got a certain allure. Is this a fashion thing that we? No, oh, this. Wow. No. Okay, and then we have this, FTV which is, right you know, it's through. and fairly. Is that brief. Okay. Notice how quickly I passed that's it off. That's just the tweet. Okay. No, I mean, is that all? They, is that all she wears? Jeans <laughs> 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 on underneath. No, Let's that's Let's hope she's only about dress. five four. I mean, look, you can see through this. Yeah. That's a good deal. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> okay, so you see. Anyone you know? You know, Bruce. Bruce, you try that hat or what, buddy? <laughs> so what's it going to be? Women agonize over this every year. About what to wear at the Christmas oh, party? I do. I shouldn't generalize. Are these your dresses? Uh, just, 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 uh, Which just this one. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't just you model one? them for us, Mag? <laughs> Wouldn't that make it ever so much easier? I'd love to show up. <laughs> I bet you would. So. Um, I'd have to go with the, uh, the backless thing. Um, the back is definitely the sexiest part of a woman. Okay. It, Rob? Oh, by Well, far. I think that, uh, it's a, it's a tie between the backless and the, uh, the velvet. I think the velvet says sumptuous, okay. the backless says... Everybody's too scared back, to go down this I road, think, eh? Bruce, though, you yeah. can probably I'm safely there. admit. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would you don't like... want to see anybody with those funny things on the sides, do you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> do I look hippie in this? <laughs> Give me that. I'll try it on later. Okay, I'll prove to you. This is a good dress. I would like to thank our studio audience and our viewers at home for tuning in. And a very warm thanks to you guys, our special panel, uh, Rob Firing, Jason Cullen, and Traders star Bruce Gray. I'm Meg Ruffman. Thanks for watching.